Hello everyone and I'm back. Welcome back to Stories of the Small Screen. You're probably saying, where have you been? Or maybe you've not said that considering I only have 17 subscribers. But nevertheless, the last time I made a video was exactly six months ago. Or maybe seven months ago. I lost track. But in that time, a lot has happened. Lots of goods, lots of bads. You know, ups and downs. That's the way the world works. And when life gives you lemon, you make lemonade. So in making lemonade, I decided let's review the last three episodes of This Is Us. Yes, This Is Us. We've been watching for six seasons. We've been actually crying for six seasons, but we just couldn't stop watching the show. Have you ever seen a show that made you so sad, but you just know every week after week you're going to tune in and that's This Is Us? So episode 16, The Family Meeting, opens up with Rebecca and Jack actually sleeping in bed. And basically they're going through phases of the uh, triplets life. The uh, infant phase, and then there's a phase when they're... Um, in elementary school, and then the phase when they're in high school. And Rebecca is the one that's always being woken up by the triplets where Jack sleeps. So they're going back and forth with different scenes when they're in high school and when Kate has a bad dream and Rebecca's the one getting up and Jack is sleeping as if he does not hear anything's going on. I'm sure many mothers can relate or many parents can relate just getting up at night and having to soothe your child back to sleep or multiple children back to sleep. Trust me, I've been there and done that. So anyways, we fast forward to real time where Kate, um, Rando, and Kevin are basically having a conversation about their mother. And uh, basically, Rebecca cannot remember that Miguel has passed away. Remember Miguel uh, passed away the last episode and what a tearjerker that was at the ending. So anyways, Rebecca... In her, you know, dementia or Alzheimer's phase that she's in, she can't remember what's happening. And the, twi the triplets are discussing what is happening next with their mother. And of course, Randall, we love Randall, but you know how he is. He thinks he knows best for everything. And Kevin and him, they love to banter back and forth about who knows best and what they should do. And Kevin's saying, I know we built, I built this home for mom. And then Randall's like, I know it has served her good purpose all these years, but now she needs higher care. And they're going back and forth and Kate is listening to them. But finally, Kate does agree with Randall and says, we need to have a family meeting. So they all agree to have a family meeting. But the funny thing is, in that family, before that, um, who walks in? Beth walks in with um, Kate's new husband. And then they're all looking at each other. And then Beth's like, uh-oh. And they're trying to figure out what's happening. I believe the new husband, Philip, is like, what did I, did I do something wrong? And Beth's like, no, they're just going to have a meeting about what to do with my mom next. And Sophie and Philip wanted to know how did Beth know what they were talking about. But you guys forget, Beth has been around this family a long time. She knows the ins and outs. She knows the looks. She knows what to say and when to keep quiet. So at this point, she decides to take their two, um, Sophie and Philip, to the to the cabin and let the triplets ha hash it out about their mother. She knows best to keep away. And Sophie and Philip is just in awe that Beth knows so much. But before I get into it, you know what I want to add? I forgot to say that Uncle Nicky walked in with Edie. Can we talk about how much I love Uncle Nicky that he found Edie? He found love and, you know, he has a stable life after all this time of being an alcoholic and, you know, living in that little camper and kind of being a recluse and having, you know, his own issues. And it's so nice to see him in love with his family and in love, you know, with his nieces and nephews. And I'm just so excited for Uncle um, Nicky. But I just wanted to add that in there. So now the three siblings, um, Kevin, uh, Kate, and Randall are at the table trying to decide what's best for their mom. And they're kind of interrupting each other. So Kate gets up and she grabs the stuff therapy cat so Randall and Kevin kind of look at each other and make jokes but Kate explains to them you know how important the cat is because people with Alzheimer's it reminds them they can take care of something or when they used to take care of something and it kind of soothes them and keeps their mind at peace I believe so she just said the person that's carrying the cat or having the cat in their hand is the person that can speak first so Randall has the cat and he's speaking first so he's basically going on about he feels as though 
their mom, Rebecca, should move in with with um, him, Beth, and their girls. And, of course, Kevin is not having it. But before I finish that conversation, it fast forward to back at the cabinet with uh, Philip, the cabin, not cabinet, sorry, with Philip, Sophie, and Beth. And Sophie and Beth, of course, they've been around the family a long time, so they, not, they know not to take things too serious or when they need to be serious. So basically to kind of ease the nerves, uh, Beth and Sophie are going back and forth describing their husbands. And basically Beth is like, I guarantee you Randall is the same. She needs to move in with us. And then um, Sophie chimes in and is like, of course, that's going to get Kevin all riled up. And then they're going to go back and forth of who's the better brother and then start this pissing contest. And Philip is basically just looking at them in awe because he kind of he looks kind of irritated and confused at the same time. He basically doesn't understand why they are not taking it as serious as they should and why uh, basically they're thinking it is a joke. But of course, like I said, Sophie and um, Beth has been in this family a long time and they know when to be serious and when not to and when to let off steam. And I think that's something Philip has just got to learn because he, of course, hasn't been there that long. So Philip is a little irritated. And then he finally says to them, you know, how come you guys are making jokes of something as serious of what they should be doing with their mom? And Beth looks and you know what? Beth puts him in his place politely, not rude, not, you know, not passive aggressive, but just reminding Philip like, hey, buddy, I've been in this family for over 30 years. I've seen it all. And basically, you're not going to tell me when to laugh and when not to. And basically, Sophie kind of agreed with him. And she made a great statement. She said, this sometime has been the, I think this has been the biggest burden or blessing of my life. And Sophie agrees. And that actually calms Phillips down because Phillips is like, okay, this is how the family dynamic is. Then he asks them, is this 50-50 or 60-40? And Beth is like, uh, it depends on the day and it depends on what's happening or how important, you know, the issue is. So Philip is just taking it all in and getting to know, like, this is my new wife's family. Then the scene, the scene fast forward to Kate and um, Rebecca again. No, I'm sorry. Kate and yeah, Rebecca. Kate is basically a teenager and her mother, Rebecca was always so positive. Trying Even though Kate sometimes couldn't receive a lot what she was saying, Rebecca's sitting at her, you know, telling her, you know, you're beautiful. And I hope you, when you go into the world, you know that, that you have a lot to offer. And Kate, being a teenager girl, was sometimes... Teenage girls and boys can go through this phase. And Kate makes a statement, you know, two out of three isn't bad. One is one dud is okay. And Rebecca's taken back and she explains how she feels, you know, of course, Kevin and um, Randall, you know, they're overachievers and she feels as though she has nothing to offer, which obviously isn't true. So it's so wonderful to see in this, you know, real time, how Kate has really, how far she has come finding herself in the school she's teaching and basically taking care of Rebecca at her bedside, the same way Rebecca has taken care of her and reassured her all these years. She's able to give that same love back to her mom. She's even had called Toby and Toby had to remind her, you know, Toby, you said, you know, Kate, you're pretty badass. You know, you you got this curriculum, you got this career. But for some reason, when you get around your brothers, you kind of, what he say? Shrink up. Actually said, you know, you make yourself a small, unsteady version of yourself. And Kate listened and she took it in and she basically agreed and said she didn't know why she did that. But then uh, Toby, which in the last few episodes, he was getting on my nerves, but I, I like him again. I love the co-parenting. I love that they can get along. And Toby says, your mom put you in charge for a reason. Basically, she knew you were going to do it and she knew Kevin in my opinion, Kevin and Randall, their personalities weren't going to get much done but bicker with each other. So Kate was the calming presence of that. And he just had to remind her of that, that that she can do it. And her mother put her in charge for a reason. I love that scene. And, you know, I can say I didn't really cry much in this episode, although it was, um, what do you call it, emotional. I just was taking it all in. It was kind of giving us a break from being so sad, but walking through the family dynam dynamic of what do you do? What what do siblings do when a parent is basically on their deathbed or um, deteriorating um, health-wise? Also, I forgot to mention, in that argument with um, Kevin and Randall, I love that 
Kevin kind of was doing some self-reflecting himself. You know, he said basically he's been a mess up his whole life. They were going back and forth with scenes with Kevin being drunk, Kevin getting in trouble, you know, the typical Kevin. And he said, you know, I did something. I finally did something good. I built this house. I'm keeping my word and I'm not going to let mom down this time. So, you know, I like to see that scene that you can see the growth in Kevin. You can see the growth in Kate and even the growth in Randall is willing to listen that he cannot control everyone all the time. And I was also thinking about that conversation that Beth is having with Rando when Rando and Beth are sitting on the bench and they're they're outside and Rando's looking at um, Kate and um, Kevin with their families. And and basically it was really awesome that Beth had to let Rando know like, hey, you are looking at them and their past self. And their present self, they have not the people that you're judging them on. And don't do that. And, you know, that, that was a real reflection that Beth wanted Randall to see. Like, stop judging them on their past versus how they behave now. And I think that's, me personally, I think Randall had an aha moment. And that's when he decided to, I, I feel as though he decided to, you know, give his brother and sister a little more credit and stop being the know-it-all. So, basically, their entire family is back together. And they're in the living room talking, and I believe they were eating Chinese food again for breakfast, which I think even Kate said, is this weird that we had it for dinner and not for breakfast? But I think it's a Pearson thing, so they were happy with that. So Kate actually says to them, you know, hey, I want to talk about mom. And, you know, Randall's like, well, here with everyone? And Kate's like, yes, because they're family and they deserve to know. So at first she said she decided that... um well, she told Randall, you know, I, I know you mean well, but it's no to moving mom to Philadelphia. Because one, she didn't want you to, she wouldn't want you to do that. She didn't want you to uproot your life and change everything for her. That's not what she wanted. And two, um, she said you basically will um, stop working to take care of her. And, and again, um, remember, rem oh, excuse me, remember Rebecca said, don't make yourself small to basically take care of me something to that effect I'm paraphrasing so Randall kind of took that in and then she had said that she was going to move um Philip and her decided to move Rebecca closer to them and that they haven't decided if she's going to live with them or a facility but something good that way she'll have more care so everyone's still silent and then Kevin says you know I'm going to honor everything you you said but can I give one more suggestion so basically he goes into the story about how him and Sophie's been up all night discussing, you know, Rebecca. And he has decided, him and Sophie both decided to move back there to help take care of her more. And uh, basically Kate is stunned. And she's like, but are you sure? And Sophie's, Sophie was on board 100% with it. But then Kate says, well, you know, I can't let you do that, Kevin, because then you won't even see your kids. And it was so nice because Kevin's... um twins mom and her husband jumped chimed right in and was like no the only thing that was keeping us on the west coast was kevin so trust me we're happy to move back and basically that solved that problem even at one point uncle nikki chimed in and was like you know we'll be here to help too him and Edie, which i of course i already said this a hundred times how much i love them as a couple he was like of course nikki being nikki saying we'll be there but not to do all that growth stuff so and everyone laughed and had a, you know a little chuckle for it and Kevin also says, you know what, we have a real opportunity or a real chance here to give mom what she wants. And basically Kate agreed to it and, and nods and shakes her head and is like, this is it. That's our plan. And Randall being Randall, he takes it in. But for some reason, he shakes Kevin's hand in agreement. Those two always make everything. It's so funny. Almost like a, a, a match or a battle. Even when they're agreeing with, with each other, shaking their hand. But you know what? That's their personalities. I love it. I love the show. And that's basically the end. And you know what? I, I said I didn't cry. But I remember the last... Well, actually, they showed a scene for the next episode. And when... Kevin calls Rando and he's like, I think it's time you need to get everyone here. My heart sink. Just like that. My heart sink. I go, you know what? They even had to make me cry during the preview. I almost got through the whole episode without doing it. But, you know, it wouldn't be This Is Us if they didn't do that to you. So at this point, this is, I'm going to stop the video right now. I know I said I was going to talk about um, the next episode, but I'm going to do another video with that because then that would just make this video in particular too long. So I'm going to do episode 17, The Train, in another video, which will be coming soon. So that being said, let me know what you guys thought. You know, let me know your thoughts on the show, 
the entire season if you want to. This particular episode here, the meeting. Um, I think I'm getting better with my commentary. I'm not trying to sound so bland, but actually with This Is Us, you can't really, it's not a lot of funny, especially these last few episodes, you know, episodes are not a lot of funny things to point out, but it's an awesome show. And just let me know what your thoughts on scale of one to 10. I always end it with, of course, this is a 10. How could it not be? But you know, you guys might think something different. Again, I want you to thank you for watching. I want to thank you again for watching Stories on the Small Screen. Again, I will be uh, reviewing the train episode soon. And please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. If you like this video, it'd be awesome if you share it. It also helps my channel grow. And lastly, please don't forget to be kind to yourself and kind to others. Thank you.